Hey everyone, uh, Mr. Kim Singh here. I've just got some uh, quick tips and a few examples of some questions that you might see on your exam in year nine. Uh, let's jump into it. The first thing that I have for your um, exam is that we get a learning log. And a learning log is essentially um, an A4 single sheet, one-sided, that you can put anything you want on. Um, you can put notes, you can read examples, um, you can put instructions and, and common mistakes, and you can put a whole heap of things. And when students first see this, they think, oh, are we allowed to do that? Is, isn't that like cheating? And you can think of it like a little cheat sheet. The danger with thinking about it like that is that you can put all this stuff in there. I've seen you know, learning logs with <laughs> you know, font that I can't even read, and it's all crammed in there. And interesting, when I look at those kinds of learning logs, I see that students actually make the mistakes that they have on their learning logs as well, and, and it makes me a bit confused. And what I've realized is on the learning log, you really want to put things that you understand, or you want to put things in your own words at least. So in that way, um, it's something that you're going to be aware of in the exam that you can take in. So I'm not testing you on your ability to memorize a formula, I'm testing you on your ability to apply that formula into different situations and things like that. So that's what we want to take away from the learning log. Um, put things that you understand and that are going to help you in the exam. Okay, keep calm. That's my next tip, right? Because you've worked hard up until this point, and um, if you're feeling nervous, that's because you care about um, you know, the results that you get from this. And what I care about is not necessarily the result that you get, but what you do know, and then what you don't know, I want to work with you on that uh, to help you improve. So keep calm. Right? This test is just a way to um, look at what areas we need to improve on and what areas we're good at. The last tip is... Show you're working. Show you're working, right? Because um, when I'm looking at a test, I don't just care about the answer that we get, I also care about how we got there. Okay, so a lot of questions actually require you to show working in order to attain all the marks for that. So make sure you show um, for all the tips that you do. Okay, let's have a look at some examples. Now, in our test, we have two topics. We're looking at different kinds of numbers, so like percentages, fractions, um, decimals, and all those types of things. And we're also looking at financial mathematics. And they're both quite closely linked together, right? Here's the first type of question you expect to get um, from numbers. We're looking at multiplying fractions. Now we can do this in a few ways. We can just um, use our calculator and put that in, and that's fine too. Or we can remember when we're multiplying fractions, we just need to multiply across, right? The numerator and the denominator. So we've got three times four, I know that's 12. Eight times five, I know that's 40. Are you happy with that? Often when I um, want to write my answer, I want to write it fully simplified. Okay. Now, um, if you put this in your calculator, it'll automatically do that for you. If you've done it manually, what you want to think about is, hang on, what numbers go both into 12 and 40? Well, they're both even, so 2 would go into it. But you want to think, are there any larger numbers which do that? And it turns out there are. 4 goes into both 12 and 40. So if you both divide the top and bottom by 4, I'll end up with 3 over 10. Okay. So that's how I can simplify our fraction. Now, think about what goes into both of them. Divide top and bottom by that amount, and you end up with 3 over 10. Let's look at this one, a ratio. Simplify 4 to 16. So this, um, these two dots here, that's like a ratio. It means 2, or um, it can be represented as a fraction as well. But how do you simplify something? And when you see the word simplify, I want you to think about reducing or making smaller. How can I make this smaller? But I want to do that in such a way that I'm not losing this meaning of what's happening here, right? 4 to 16, you can think that as maybe like 4 boys to 16 girls, or 4 sheep to uh, 16 dogs, you know, it doesn't matter as long as they're measuring the same quantity. To make them simpler, again, kind of similar to your fractions, you want to think what number goes into both of them. 4 and 16, well, 4 goes into both of them, right? How many times does 4 go into 4? It goes in once. How many times does 4 go into 16? Or goes in four times. Right? So that's a ratio of one to four. That's how you can simplify a ratio. Thinking about what's in common. All right, last one for this part. Um, 4.7058. We want that written to three significant figures. Remember, there's a whole heap of different rules with significant figures. One of the most important ones is that um, any non-zero digit is significant. Okay. So when I'm looking at these, I know automatically the four, seven, five, and eight are significant. The question about zero is that zero is sometimes significant. Okay, when is zero significant? Well, one of the situations is when it's in between two significant digits, 
then it is significant as well. And right now it's in between two non-zero ones, so I know that zero in this case is significant. What does it mean written to three significant though? Right? That means that my answer should only have three significant figures. I still have to remember my normal rounding rules though. Okay, so I still have to do some rounding. So I know I'm looking at these three here, but when I'm rounding, I have to look at the digit afterwards. Now if this is five or more, we say we let it soar. So we, we increase this one by one. So this written to three significant figures is just going to be 4.71, just like that. Okay, financial mathematics. I love looking at this topic because it's something that we can really see and you know we work with money every day. Um, how can we think about how to incorporate mathematics and um, the financial aspects of it? 35% of $250, right? So often uh, we look at percentages um, and discounts and things like that. If I wanted to find 35%, I know that that means 35 out of 100. So I can write this a few different ways. I can write it as a fraction. That would be 35 over 100. Or I can write it as a decimal. That would be 0 0.35. And you can also even write this in your calculator if you know how to use the percentage button. Right? You can press shift and the left bracket and it'll bring up a percentage symbol there for you to use. Whichever way you prefer. Um, but when I'm looking at this calculation, of in this situation means multiply means the time symbol there. So when I want to find 35% of $250, I could write that as an equation. I can write that as 0 0.35 times 250. Okay? And when you put that into your calculator, you should get $87.50. Right? I think we get 87.5, but when we're looking at money, we generally like to have two decimal places because that's cents, right? So 50 cents there. All right, awesome. Last one here. We've got $5,000 saved for two years at 3%, and we should say how often, say per annum. What is the total amount? Okay, so a few things going on here. We know that when we're looking at a uh, simple interest, right, the formula to calculate that looks like this. So the interest can be calculated by taking the principal, multiplying by the rate, and multiplying by the number of whatever kind of unit we're looking at. In this case, we're looking at number of years. Right? So how do I put that all together? Well, I need to know my principal first. And the principal is always what you start with. It's what you have. In this case, I know that P is $5,000. The rate is going to be 3%. And the number of years where I've got that already, that's 2. So that's my end there. Okay, let's put it all together. So the interest is equal to 5,000 times 3 times 2. Are you happy with that? I'm not happy because I've actually made a mistake here. And this is a mistake that students always make. Uh, and it's because, you know, maybe you're in an exam, you're in a rush, and you forget certain things, right? But this 3%, they say, oh, yeah, there's 3 there. So I'll just put that in my formula. Remember, it's 3% as a rate, right? A percentage means out of 100. So just kind of how we looked up here, it doesn't mean 35, it means 0 0.35. And so this doesn't mean three, it's actually, when you put it in your calculator or you convert it, 0 0.03. Right, and when you put that in, uh, you should get that that's equal to $300. Again, is that my final answer? What have I calculated here? I've calculated the interest. And you know that the interest is the extra amount earned, right? But if I'm asking for the total amount, I have to do something else. I've got this extra amount. I've got what I started with. The total amount at the end of this time is just going to be all of those put together. So my final calculation, the total amount, I'll just write a little statement here. The total is equal to 5,000 plus 300, and that's equal to 5,300 there. And that's how you can work out the total amount for financial mathematics. I hope that uh, gives you an idea of what kind of questions you expect on the exam and some last minute tips on how to approach it. All the best with it.